Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Intrepid Museum's live virtual programming. Thank you so much for joining us today for our program, Flying in Style. We're so thrilled you're here. If you have any questions as we go through the program today, feel free to put them in the chat. Also say hello, let us know where you're tuning in from. My name's Alicia, and I'm an educator at the Intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum here in New York City, and I'll be your host for this program. And just as a reminder, the museum's live streams are free. And if you'd like to support us in delivering this exciting content, please do click on the link in the comments or in the description. So feel free again to use the chat today to say hello, let us know, hey, have you ever been to the museum before? Come visit us if you are uh, able, if you're local. Um, we are now open Thursdays through Sundays, 10 to 5, and we'd love to see you on board the ship. Of course, if you have any questions too, you can put them in the chat. So. Once again, at the Intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum, where I'm an educator, our mission is to honor our heroes, educate the public, and inspire our youth. And today, we are going to be talking a bit about planes, and more specifically, the artwork on some of those planes that we have on display at the museum, what the artwork represents, and also how the designs on the airplanes are kind of like sports teams, believe it or not. But for those of you who may not be familiar, this is the Intrepid Museum. So our complex is located on the west side of Manhattan in the Hudson River. Our museum is housed inside of a historic World War II aircraft carrier, the former USS Intrepid. And we also have a historic Cold War era submarine, a space shuttle called Enterprise, the original prototype orbiter, and a British Airways Concorde on our complex. So as you can see in this picture though, our ship is pretty big. Our ship is actually so big, it is 913 feet long. And that is so big that if you were to stand it up on its end, it would be as tall as a New York City skyscraper. It's also so long that you could play three games of football on top at the very same time. So pretty big ship. Now it was built in 1943 for a very specific purpose. It was made during a time where we were fighting countries across oceans. And we didn't want to have to launch our planes over here in America to have to then fly them all the way across the water to get over there because that would just take way too much fuel and time. So we created things like the Intrepid. Now, does anyone know what kind of a ship the Intrepid is? What do we call that? Tell me in the chat if you happen to know what type of ship is the Intrepid. Something that would allow us to, I don't know, carry airplanes out in the water carry some aircraft maybe anyone know what that might be called well everyone if you said an aircraft carrier you would be right so not only can ships like this carry aircraft but it also lets us launch and then land just like a floating airport too and uh this is a very very large ship as i said we could fit up to about 300 or rather 100 uh planes on it at any time and 3,000 people on board too so I'll start off by asking this. Do any of you out there like sports? Yeah. What are some of your favorite sports teams? Let me know in the chat if you happen to know. I'll start us off. I'm actually from Pittsburgh originally, so I have to admit that my favorite sports teams are of that area in Pennsylvania. Things like the Pittsburgh Steelers, go Steelers. Also the Penguins when I was growing up, they were amazing. Um, the Pirates were actually really amazing when I was younger. Maybe not so much anymore. Sorry, Pirates. Um, but let me know if you happen to like any sports team out there in the chat. You know, when we think about all of these different types of teams and sports, we can think about colors and logos and shapes and things like that that might help to identify teams. So, for example, here in New York, if you are a Mets fan, maybe, uh, you might recognize that their colors are blue and white and orange. And those are actually some colors that can be found on the New York State flag as well. So these are colors that we can identify with New York City, New York State. Uh, and also, we can identify colors with planes, too. So again, think about your favorite sports team and think about what that team's branding looks like. So maybe that's the colors or the logo or the mascot even. So everyone, this is a plane I want to look at here. We're going to take a look at this big blue plane. Does anyone happen to know what the name of this plane might be? We also often, you know, we get a lot of repeat visitors here at the Intrepid for these programs. So maybe you happen to know out there. Hi, Anne. You said you love this museum. Wonderful. Well, welcome. We love to see you here, too. So everyone, this particular plane here is actually the oldest plane that we have at the museum. It's from World War II. 
actually it was uh, this play was created about the time that the ship was created too, back in around 1943. So this plane we call the Avenger. Now I wanted to bring you here for a very specific reason. If you have come to some of our other programs, you might know that this plane is camouflaged, right? But other planes during this time period, they also used this coloration. If you ever happen to take a note of this here, this plane, it has three colors on it, right? We've got a darker blue on the top. We've got a lighter blue in the middle. And then we've got a white color on the bottom. So other planes that flew around this time, things like the Hellcat and the Corsair, they also had similar colors like that. But some Avengers weren't actually this blue color at all. Some of them had gray in them as well. So some, depending on where they were flying, maybe they weren't flying over the Pacific Ocean like the one that we had. Maybe they were flying instead in the North Atlantic. So those were gray. Now, why do you think they'd have different color schemes like that? Any ideas? Sometimes when you go different areas around the world, the weather looks a little bit different. So I'll tell you, everyone, the weather up there in the North Atlantic has a lot of gray clouds. It's kind of overcast. It's a lot colder up there. So that gray color helps them to blend in into the sky that much better. Now, the blue ones, of course, if we go back and look at our Avenger here, those three different colors help them to blend in because if you are flying over the plane looking down, you've got that dark blue color, helps it to blend in with the water. If you're flying right alongside of it, you look over to the side, you see that light blue color, kind of like, hopefully, the color of the blue sky outside. And then if you're underneath it and you're looking up, it's going to blend in a lot more with the clouds. So everyone, looking at these planes too, there is something else they have in common. There's a particular marking on them, actually. See if you can spot it. So they all have the same logo on their sides there. Do you see it? Can you catch it? It's right there in those red circles. So does anyone know what that is called on an airplane? Again, now this is kind of a type of logo. We can think of the color of the plane sort of like the jersey of the team, but the logo helps you to know which team you're looking at or what country they're from. So this marking is something called a roundel. Roundel, all right? So this roundel represents the United States of America. But if you didn't necessarily get that at first glance, I don't blame you because it kind of looks like something is missing on it, right? When you think of a country, you often might think of the flag of that country and specifically maybe the colors of that country. So if this is the United States, what might we be missing here? What do you think? How about that red color, huh? Well, when I think of the United States, yeah, red, white, and blue, right? So, of course, I would think, where is the red? But here, believe it or not, this is what it used to look like. So, this was the Roundel of America. It used to have red on it prior to the style of these planes. You see how there's no red on it? So, this is what it looked like. It had that blue circle with a white star and a red dot right in the middle. So, why does it look different in the other pictures that we just looked at? Why do you think the Navy might have removed the red dot from the roundel during World War II? Well, remember, at that time, the Avengers and the Hellcats and all of these other planes were flying in the Pacific Ocean, and we were fighting against the Japanese Navy. And the planes that they were fighting against actually looked kind of like this. All right, now this right here is something called a Mitsubishi Zero. These planes were flown by the Japanese. And if you notice the roundel on these planes, oh yeah, you might notice that also has got a big red circle surrounded by white on it. It's got an element there that's a little too similar. So if you think of it kind of like a sports team, uh, even when sports teams have similar colors to the team that they're playing against. So maybe you have home teams that wear white jerseys and the away teams might wear colored jerseys. So that way you can tell them apart. So they decided to get rid of the dot because they didn't want to be mistaken for the Japanese planes. Probably a smart move. So everyone, we are now going to play a roundel challenge. This is what it eventually looked like, as you can see. So here's our roundel challenge. So I'm going to show you some roundels, and I want you to guess what country it comes from. So you are going to see a roundel and two flags. So if you think it comes from the country's flag that's on the left in the chat, I want you to type the letter A. And if you think it comes from the country that's on the right, 
want you to type the letter B in the chat. All right. So here we go. Here is our first roundel in our challenge. So take a good look at this before I show you the two options. Think about which country this roundel might belong to. Take a look at the colors. Take a look at any symbols on it. And think about the significance that those images might tell you about which country it belongs to. All right. So do you think this is A, Australia, type A if you think it's Australia, or B, New Zealand, type B if you think it's New Zealand, all right? A or B, let us know in the chat, which one do you think this is? Give you a couple seconds to enter in your response here. If you think it's A, Australia, type A, or B, New Zealand, type B. Which of these countries belongs to that roundel? Or rather, which, yeah. <laughs> all right, everyone. So the answer is Australia. So you'll notice that although we don't see that symbol on the flag, the colors are very similar. And Australia is, of course, very well known for its kangaroos. Now, here is New Zealand's roundel. Very similar colors here. But does anyone know what bird that is? That's actually the national bird of New Zealand down there. That bird there is the kiwi. And fun fact, that's actually what the New Zealanders, uh, that, what their nickname is too, the kiwis. So, all right, good job, everyone. If you said Australia, A, you were right. So let's do another one. All right, so in this one, we see yellow, red, blue, and a white star in the middle. So taking a look at this, which country do you think this roundel belongs to? Do you think it's A, Zambia, or B, Colombia? Type A in the chat if you think this belongs to Zambia and type B in the chat if you think this belongs to the country of Colombia. A or B, which roundel does this belong to? Any guesses? All right, and everyone, the answer is Colombia. Now again, this time might've been a little bit easy. This time we can really see those color similarities very, very clearly there. We've got the red, the blue, the, um, the yellow on there, very, very similar with those stripes. And meanwhile, here is the Zambian roundel. So it really does look like it's flagged too. You've got the same colors, the red, black, orange, and green. And then it's also got that beautiful bird with its wings outstretched on it as well. All right, my friends, try this one. Here's another one for you. All right, so take a close look at this roundel. All right, and now here are the two options. Do you think it is A, Ireland, or B, Jamaica? If you think this roundel belongs to Ireland, go ahead and type A in the chat. And if you think that it belongs to Jamaica, go ahead and type the letter B, A or B. Which of these is that roundel? All right, and everyone, the answer is Jamaica. Again, you could probably tell based on the colors. Good job, Andrea. I see you there in the chat. You could probably tell again the colors. Jamaica. You've got that green, the yellow, the black. But just for fun, let's take a look at Ireland. Probably one of the coolest ones, I think. This one's got the same colors as the flag, the green, white, and orange. But it's also got that really neat swirly pattern that kind of evokes like a Celtic knot that they're so famous for as well. Good job. All right, here's another one for you now. All right, so take a look at this one here. We're looking at some boxes, kind of a checkerboard pattern. All right, now do you think this one is A, Poland, or B, Canada? Once again, now look at the colors, look at the markings, look at the patterns. This one might be a little bit trickier. All right, we, we see some guesses for Poland now in the chat. All right, any other guesses? Some Canada. All right. Very good. Here we go. I know they are really cool designs for Paint Obsidian. Absolutely. Okay, everyone. So the answer to this one is Poland. So the colors, everyone, are really close with that red and white. But it's also got that squared off, you know, kind of look to it. And, um, and that's really, you know, it does match Poland quite well. Uh, here's the Canadian one for comparison. 
course, pretty obvious. I think you can now tell with that maple leaf on it, just like their flag. So this one actually has another color that it's not in the flag, that blue color. Uh, but again, that maple leaf dead giveaway. <laughs> All right. Now, everyone, here is the last one. And this one's going to be a little tricky. Take a look at this one very closely. Again, we're looking at the colors, the patterns, the shapes, all of those things about it. And now tell me, as our last one, which one is this? Is this Kenya, type A, if you think it's Kenya, or Jordan, type B, if you think it's Jordan? Kenya or Jordan, A or B? Which one of these countries does this roundel belong to? Little tricky, little tricky here. So let us know in the chat what you think. Type A if you think that roundel belongs to Kenya or type B if you think that roundel belongs to Jordan. What do we think? All right, everyone. So again, both of these countries have the same colors for the most part, similar patterns with those stripes. But the answer is... Kenya. And I see a couple of you got that in the chat too. Good job, Kenya. So you can, again, really tell the difference with those thicker stripes and then the thinner white lines in between. So very good guess out there, everyone. And uh, for comparison, again, there is the Jordanian one. So you can see it's got that seven-pointed star in the red triangle up there and then those thicker lines on the flags uh, or on the flag, which is the um, green, white, and black. So we can see these roundels have very distinctive characteristics that help us to learn where they're from based on if you happen to know what their flag looks like or other um, similar you know, characteristics or animals or traits about their particular um, countries. So everyone, I want to pause here before moving on and see if we have any questions right now, any questions at all about roundels or uh, you know anything else like that. Are all roundel circles? So no, they're not actually. Um, we uh, they're in a variety of shapes. We actually just saw Poland, for instance, is more of a square shaped one, uh, and some are even actually in the kind of the shape of, of like a shield or a triangle or a cross, depending on the country. Um, most of them are circles. Again, the name roundel sort of evokes that, um, but there are a number of other shapes as well. Good question. Any others? Do roundels always stay the same? No, they can absolutely change. Uh, just like how we saw the American roundel change. Remember before it had that, um, it was the blue circle with the white star and the red dot in the center. But then they realized based on the conflict they were fighting in, that'd be a little bit confusing to have that red dot right in the center. So they decided to change it. They took the red dot out. They put the two white bars on either side. And then eventually they changed it even further and added red lines to the sides too. So now uh, it's red, white, and blue once again. So yes, they can definitely change throughout time. So roundels act like logos again, and they help us to identify countries. But if we look at another plane that we have on the hangar deck here at the Intrepid, you will notice that this one, the Fury here, uh, which is a jet plane from the Cold War era. So after the Avenger, this one takes a little bit of a different approach. So it's not painted blue in that countershade camouflage that we saw on the Avenger. In fact, this one's primarily gray, but it has a very bold yellow lightning bolt painted right across the side of it. Kind of cool and done very much on purpose. But before I get to that, I do want to point out something else on it. Um, you can see if they're, um, you know, on the back side of the plane there. I want to, again, point out that roundel to you. There we go. So now, as I mentioned before, our roundel for America looks similar to before. It's got that white star on the blue circle and those two white bars on either side. But now it's got that red stripe in it too. So not just in a red dot, it's got the red stripes, just like these stars and stripes on our flag. Uh, and so it does actually kind of look a lot more like our flag now too, doesn't it? But going back to that lightning bolt and the gray color, as the Navy used jets more and more, they uh, kind of limited the use of paint on jets because all of this paint added a lot of weight. And it doesn't seem like it would be that much, but if you paint something really, really big, it certainly adds up. And in some cases, it could add 50 to 100 pounds to the plane. So instead, they decided to take the paint off and just add more fuel. So why the lightning bolt? 
Well, pilots were able to add some unique designs to their planes to make them even uh, more unique. And you can kind of think about that as like athletes who maybe have special hair or, you know, I'm thinking of Troy Palomalu, obviously, because I'm a Steelers fan. Um, or maybe they wear long sleeves or they have special socks or goggles or something like that that they wear. So these are things that help to make them a bit more individual, uh, whether they're on the field or on the court that sort of thing. So same thing here. Um, and, uh, you know, also if we were to look at planes um, like this one right here, we've got this green kind of like thing along the side here. Can you see what that looks like? You want to take a guess what that is? These green symbols represent what squadron it's a part of. So same thing as that lightning bolt. And the squadron is like a smaller team that flew together within a team. So everyone who came from the same ship so these green things here, uh, yep, kind of looks like a lizard or an iguana, right? So as you can probably guess, the name of this squadron, this smaller team within a team, was called the Green Lizards. And here is their patch, the logo that they got to wear on all their clothing. So this is what their attack squadron logo looked like. Some people say it kind of looks like an alligator. Some people say it kind of looks like Godzilla holding a trident. There's a sunset over the water. But, you know, the one on the plane doesn't quite look as detailed and as cool and fearsome as that one, does it? And that is because the artist, when he went to go paint that logo on the plane, was like, uh-uh, that's way too complicated to have to paint that on a bunch of planes. They needed something that was a little simpler, a little easier to replicate, a little easier to see even when you're flying in the sky. So that's why the green lizards look a little bit more simpler on the plane, a little less intimidating, but still pretty cool nonetheless. Now, this Skyhawk is actually pretty special to the museum because it is the only plane that actually took off and landed from the Intrepid. All of the others that we've seen so far are the types of planes that took off and landed, but this exact plane actually did. So we do love this one. Um, and there is a funny story about this plane. There were two different squadrons and they were going out on Liberty, which basically meant that they had some free time. And so they were going to land on an airbase and each squadron had about 14 planes each. So one squadron goes away, the other squadron one night while they went over, they stole one of the planes from the other squadron and they painted over it with their own squadron's marking. So when it came time to leave, they left with all their planes and the other squadron was missing one plane and they thought they had left the other squadron's plane there too. And so they were like, hey, where'd our plane go? Until they realized that the plane was there, it just had the other team's markings on it. So kind of a nasty little trick that they played there on them, <laughs> but still fun nonetheless. All right. So once again, I want to pause here and see if we've got any other questions so far. Uh, did the pilots actually paint the planes? So the pilots oftentimes got to paint the markings, the special little logos and symbols on the planes. Uh, but for the most part, the overall paint, uh, the overall coat of paint that is on these planes, that kind of gray color, um, that was done by special Navy painters and any of the special details like the uh, roundels or any of the insignia and the um, numbers and, and the other uh, letters and call signs on the planes were done by Navy painters. Um, but yeah, the pilots oftentimes, you know, could paint their own little logos on it. Um, sometimes they would actually keep track of how many planes they shot down by putting little symbols uh, next to their cockpits as well in order to give themselves some flair too. Good question. Any others? Can you write words on the planes? Yeah, so we can actually see on the planes, of course, they've got, it says, let me make this bigger for you. It says US Navy on it, right? You've also got um, the letters that are on the tail. So that has to do with um, the type of plane it is and what squadron they're in. Um, there's numbers too. But yeah, the pilots could also put words in their names on the plane too. Oftentimes by the cockpit, I mentioned that they'll have um, the number of planes that they shot down there, but they'll also actually put their name on it as well. So they personalize their plane uh, to their own little specifications and they have their own little name tag on it because that's the plane that they have grown accustomed to and that's the plane that they are always flying. So great questions, everyone. All right, now this is another plane that is very famous that's on our flight deck. This, everyone, is a Blue Angels Tiger. Now they are a very special squadron. Um, they are a flying information squadron. They are a squadron of aerial acrobatic pilots. 
So they often will travel around the country and they'll do special shows all around uh, to show off all of the skills and the very, very trained techniques that these Navy pilots uh, have been trained to do. So it's really showing off all of their skills because, of course, Navy pilots are pretty, pretty awesome. On the side of the Blue Angels plane, you can see their insignia. Uh, so again, this is kind of like their roundel. Again, we know the Blue Angels are flying uh, with the United States, um, but this is a particular uh, logo that the Blue Angels have. So this insignia, um, it's got um, an aircraft carrier on the uh, bottom part of the shield here. Uh, so that means that they flew off of the aircraft carriers. And then up here, there are four of them flying in formation in front of clouds. So that gives you a sense of where they flew, why they flew, how they flew. Also, the colors of the plane are very, very particular. Uh, so much so that they have their own colors that they paint their planes. The blue color of this plane is called Blue Angels Blue. All right, pretty good. Uh, and then the yellow one is called Insignia Yellow. So they always use that uh, particular color combination there when they're flying. And again, this is kind of like their uniform, right? It's their team. Now, another insignia that's really neat to look at is this one. You might notice right here, this right here is of, well, it kind of looks like a pirate's flag, right? That's the Jolly Roger sign. And it's a pretty common one to find on planes. It's been used and reused a lot over time. And there's a lot of different squadrons that have used that particular one, uh, that Jolly Roger sign. Um, only one Navy squadron at a time can use it though. So if you are the Jolly Roger squadron, that's your logo. It's yours. No one else can use it. But if your squadron is ever decommissioned and so they kind of, you know, break up the band, then this insignia is up for grabs and any other squadron can then grab it and use it. But then no one else can use it too. So it is a pretty cool one. Um, that uh, plane we're looking at here is the Cougar. Um, so you can see, of course, the Jolly Roger insignia on the side. I would imagine that is pretty you know, strikes fear in the heart of many type thing with that cool skull and crossbones there. So I would think a lot of pilots would jump at the opportunity to use that one. Now on the flight deck across from the Cougar is actually this plane. This is called the Kafir. First of all, let's take a closer look at it. You can see the roundel on the side of it there, if we take a close look. So looking at that roundel, again, that is in the center of the plane there. It's a white circle with a blue six pointed star on it. So if we take a close look, anyone have a guess what country that roundel might represent? Again, it's a white circle with a blue six pointed star on it. Any guesses? You can kind of actually uh, maybe take a guess based on the colors of the plane too. This is definitely painted in a camouflage color here. Maybe camouflage to fly and blend in with the desert. So everyone, this particular plane uh, is actually flying for the country of Israel. So that six-pointed star there, if you are familiar, um, it's also known the Star of David, um, that is on their flag as well. And that's a very important symbol to the country of Israel. Um, fun fact, though, Kafir, the name of the plane, translates into lion cub. So uh, that is our little lion cub up there uh, and a big lion cub, I should say. Um, they are very, very powerful supersonic jets. So really cool plane to have. Um, and again, they are camouflaged to blend in with the desert. Now, remember, we were talking about teams within teams. So we also have this one here. Oh, there's the Israel flag, by the way. All right. So we can see that six pointed star. And of course, the six pointed star on the Israeli flag. So that's the Israel roundel. Now, uh, we were talking about teams within teams, right? So we've got this one here. This is another type of team, all right? This is the U.S. Coast Guard. So uh, another, it's a branch of the military. Here is their logo, all right? So the logo looks like this, all right? So you can see all the symbolism of that, the U.S. Coast Guard. It's got their anchor. It's got 1790, which is when it was founded. This particular helicopter here is one that was from the Brooklyn Navy Yard. So on the back of the plane, you can kind of see it says Brooklyn on it. Uh, and these types of helicopters were used actually to save people from the water. So you can see here the uh, Coast Guard insignia, of course, next to the U.S. roundel. And again, this was from a little later on. So this was after World War II. Um, we again have that blue circle with the white star 
and the red stripes on the white um, bars on the sides. So very, very interesting plane here. Again, this would rescue people from the water. They would actually fly over and hover over the water. They would throw out a basket and uh, allow the person that they're rescuing in the water to grab onto the basket, then haul them up. And another cool thing about it too is that it's actually got these buoy things right over the wheels here, which allows the helicopter to float. It can actually float on the water as well. So a very versatile, uh, great helicopter to have if you are in the Coast Guard looking out for rescuing people in the water. Now this plane is also very interesting. Uh, this plane that we see here in the center is called the Air Maki. And if you take a look at the roundel, so the roundel is actually on the top of the wing, so we can't see it here, but I've put it on the screen for you. If you take a look at the colors on the plane, as well as this roundel, what country do you think this might come from? It's called the Air Maki. The colors here are red, white, and green. And there are a couple of countries that might have that color, those three colors on their flag. But if you had to take a guess, it's called Air Maki. And also on the very back of the plane, everyone, there is uh, the words, it says, Frecce Tricolori. There you go, Andrea, you guessed it. That country is Italy. That's right. So this is an Italian plane. And actually, this is the Italian version, we could say, of the Blue Angels. Frecce Tricolori, my bad Italian accent. It stands for Tricolored Arrows, which... Uh, Kind of like is what it looks like there, right? Italian pride. Okay, great. Yeah, so it's got the uh, green, white, and red kind of forming that arrow thing there. Um, and so again, they are like the Italian version of the Blue Angels. They do stunts just like them. They even put those three colors in smoke while they're flying around. And uh, they actually train their pilots in a plane just like this one. So the stripes on the front there are those three colored arrows. Uh, and Andrea, you said your own country. Awesome. So I don't know if you're tuning in from Italy or if maybe that's just uh, where, you, where your family is from, but welcome. Awesome. Very cool. Let us know if you have ever seen the Frecce Tre Colori uh, flying in the sky, because I would imagine that would be very, very cool uh, to see another country's version of the Blue Angels, because the Blue Angels are pretty awesome. Uh, the Thunderbirds also um, are another group of uh, flying um stunt pilots that we also see here in America too. Um, earlier on during the pandemic, actually, uh, last summer, uh, those of us in New York City were treated to quite a show where the Blue Angels and the Thunderbirds flew together all around the city. So everyone who was stuck at home could look up into the sky and actually see them flying by. So that was quite a treat too. And yes, you said you've seen them many times. Awesome. Very, very cool. That's really exciting to hear. So I bet that was quite an amazing show to see. Great. So Right across from uh, the uh, plane that we just saw here is actually this plane, which is also really, really cool and also has a really cool insignia as well. There's just a lot of cool planes that we have at the Intrepid, everyone. So the, the uh, one that you might notice here, everyone, this is a playing card. And specifically, as you can see, this is the Ace of Spades. Now, this in particular is one of the oldest known squadrons. They go back to World War I, the Ace of Spades, but of course, many different squadrons have used it over the years, only one at a time though. Um, so this one was particularly for VMA-231. And they use Harrier jets in a very specific way. The Harrier jet here is a really cool plane. It's got some vents on the side that get angled down. All right, so these vents, they kind of to me look like fish gills kind of, but basically it's a plane, it's a jet, it's shooting lots of air out on the sides, but then they can actually, if they're facing backwards, they can tilt them down. I did this really strangely, tilt them down like this, and it blasts all of that air down, which means it can actually kind of hover in place and it can actually land vertically too. It's something called a VTOL aircraft, vertical takeoff and landing, which is so cool. You don't think of that in terms of a jet, which you just think of, you know, launching um, either off a runway or off of an aircraft carrier with, uh, you know, a catapult system that we have. Um, but this one in particular can just, you know, do whatever it wants. So the best of both worlds, uh, specifically with our Harrier jet there. And then, of course, everyone talking about artwork. I would be remiss if I did not show you something that looked like this. So, of course, I have to show you this one. This is the Crusader with that very menacing shark face on the front. 
So this one was painted like this by the pilot. Again, he did this both to differentiate between different planes, but also just because he thought it looked really cool. And it does look pretty cool, doesn't it? Oftentimes, you know, we've seen a lot of planes that have this very scary shark face on it. Um, the mouth is right over the intake jets. So, of course, they're sucking in lots of air there. You definitely don't want to put your hand or anything close to that. So, you know, making it look menacing is also a way to maybe say, hey, don't, don't get close to this. Um, but, yeah, a really cool little shark face on the side of that. So even with all of this, you know, we do have to make decisions now thinking about the artwork on the planes that we have at the museum. Um, for example, I can point out, do you see the top of this particular plane? All right. In the cockpit area where the glass is, you see all that blue up there on top of the Crusader. So that's not actually artwork. That is special paint that is used to protect the inside of the cockpit of the plane in order to protect it from the sun because it's out there exposed to the elements all day long. So we uh, at the museum, you know, our, our aircraft curators um, and restorators, they have to make sure that they're taking care of these planes as well because we are very lucky to have so many cool planes up on our flight deck. Um, but in order to protect the interior, uh, of course, the seats and all of the gadgets and equipment that are inside of it, they paint this protective blue paint on it to block out the sun a bit. Um, so that's a really important aspect too to think about uh, when you're displaying airplanes as well. And actually, if we go back to this one now, this is called the Sky Raider. And you can see this one is painted that sort of gray or silver color. And it's done that way because when we got it and when we restored it, it actually didn't look anything like that at all. Uh, but they wanted to make it look original. So if somebody had at some point painted the plane, made it look totally different than how it looked when it originally rolled off the factory line. But in order to make it look the most original, it actually would have been plain aluminum on the outside. So just plain silver with no paint on it at all. Now that would look really cool, but it is kind of, you know, hard to the on the plane for it to be sitting out there. Actually in this picture, I think it's, uh, you can see the snow on the ground. So we are New York City. We are exposed to the elements, of course. So it would look really cool to have no paint at all. But with all of the rain and all of the snow and all of the wind and everything else, all of the heat and the sun and the, the summertime in New York City, that aluminum would start to get kind of yucky. It would start to corrode. It might get rusty. We are, of course, an aircraft carrier. So we are right on the salt water of the Hudson River there. So it wouldn't look very nice. So the museum decided to paint it gray to make it sort of suggest aluminum, to make it kind of look like aluminum, but also still to protect the metal underneath it as well. So again, this is a way that we can sort of preserve the plane while still trying to honor what it originally looked like. Uh, also, I can point out the logo here for you on the side. If you look closely at this image, let me see if I can make it just a little bit bigger for you. The logo on the right, right over here. So this is an image that is the earth, right? On top of the earth, it looks like there's a little bird's nest. Inside of the bird's nest, you got two birds kind of looking a little panicked, looking out on either side. And then you've got one bird that's flying around the earth and it's got a helmet on. And on the bottom of it, you can see it says testing division. So if you had to, excuse me, if you had to take a guess, what do you think this plane was used for? What do you think this particular squadron did? What kind of a plane was this based on this particular logo? So if I had to take a guess, right, you've got these birds, you've got this nest. And so of course, you know, they say you're kicking the bird out of the nest. Um, this was a plane that was used as a testing plane and you've got that helmet on it kind of like, kind of like I imagine like a crash test dummy. So this particular plane was used in order to, um, be tested out. This was a testing division. We were just trying things out. And so this was a plane where they would maybe push it to its limits and, uh, see what they could do with it, uh, just to start things off. All right, my friends, so before we wrap it up, one last time, I would like to uh, open it up to any questions and see if we've got any uh, questions um, about the program for today. Why do planes have to be painted? Yeah, so again, like I was mentioning, we've got a lot of um, being open to the elements here. Um, originally, they were painted more for practical purposes. So again, we looked, talked about the Avenger. It was painted in this, uh, the, there's different shades of blue and the white. That was for camouflage. Those planes during World War II went a lot slower. 
right? So those, and especially the Avenger, which was a torpedo bomber, those were a lot more subjected to possibly being shot at. So it was very important for them to blend in. The color of the plane really helped. Um, and also, if you see one of our other programs, too, we talked about Dazzle Paint, right? They painted the Intrepid, actually, with these crazy designs and things. So that was really a, a function of trying to keep them safe. But then eventually, as time went on and the planes got a little bit more advanced and the technology improved, they were able to go much faster and they could kind of zip around in the sky and avoid things like that. The paint became less of um, a way to protect them and more of, again, a way to identify them. So that's why you had the squadron logos. Um, but then, uh, you know, now, especially same thing, it's to protect the planes oftentimes. Um, in the case of the A-12 that we have on our flight deck, it's actually got paint that um, is, it's got uh, radar deflecting properties to it. So uh, it was a spy plane, of course. Um, people mix it up with the SR-71 sometimes, but it's this beautiful, big, black, sleek plane. And the paint itself, was used to help to protect it and to uh, make sure that the radar couldn't find it too. So there's a whole variety of different reasons why uh, the planes have to be painted. Um, and it really just depends on the situation why they're painted too. That's a great question. All right, any others? Does the museum ever have to paint the planes on display? Yes. So um, as I mentioned, you know, because we are right off the water, because we are open to the element uh, elements, um, we oftentimes, you know, do have our wonderful, talented aircraft restorators who are constantly working on our planes, constantly repainting them. Um, they actually were just repainting the A-12, uh, believe it or not, that I was just talking about with that cool black paint. Um, also, there is an engine to start the engine of the A-12 that they've been working on as well. So that's kind of a small yellow machine that's often on display next to it on our flight deck. Um, so they're constantly keeping up with these things, constantly making sure that they look good on the flight deck. Um, anytime we get a new um, piece of equipment, a new aircraft in our collection, oftentimes they'll, you know, try to spruce it up, make it look nice. But sometimes they decide to not make it look nice and they keep areas of it original to how uh, it was. So for example, I know they're working on a helicopter right now um, where the inside of it, they have decided not to touch it. So you'll actually be able to see its current state. It's not the greatest condition inside, but they decided to keep it that on purpose so that you could see what it looked like um, and the state of it as it was meant to be. Uh, so yeah, that's also, again, a choice of the curators, um, which is another cool you know, aspect to working in a museum as well. All right, my friends. So uh, I want to say thank you so much for joining us for our program today. Uh, if you have any other questions about our programs, you can reach out to us through our website, intrepidmuseum.org, or also through our social media channels. Um, thanks for sharing your comments and watching today um, and your questions too. Um, and as you know, the museum has introduced a number of new live streams. So please do follow and subscribe to this channel or visit our website for the latest streaming schedule. And also, if you're able, you're Donations of any amount can help to keep our programs free or low cost, just like this one. So you can check that out or also even explore becoming a member online. Now, our next family program is Tuesday at 3 p.m. It's going to be Jobs on Deck, where we're going to talk about the city at sea on board the Intrepid during its time in service and all of the different roles that the sailors had on board the ship. So we hope you can join us for that. Once again, that is this Tuesday at 3 p.m. right here on our streaming platforms. And as a special little plug, I'd also like you to, uh, to invite you to join us tonight in about an hour, actually, an hour and 15 or so at 5 p.m. for our next Virtual Astronomy Live. So this month, we are going to be talking to NASA scientists Ryan Ziegler and Juliana Gross, who keep track and study the samples that are brought back from space. So moon rocks and meteorites and a whole lot more. Uh, beforehand, I will actually be doing a short pre-show about all of the things that we have left on the moon. So things like golf balls and memorials and even a mini museum. So be sure to tune in on Twitch starting at 5 p.m. to check out that pre-show on Lunar Litter, followed by the main event. So it is all free. You can find out more information about how to tune in on our website at intrepidmuseum.org. So once again, thank you all so much for joining us today. Hopefully we will see you online for an upcoming program. So thanks so much, everyone. And uh, hopefully we will see you soon. All right. See you next time, everyone.